Ah, everybody, welcome to another episode of Yala. Ba, 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 ba. Your thrice weekly podcast where we talk about the hottest news with a touch of what, Terrence? Good old 2023 humor, man. Yeah, good old 2023 humor. This is the yeah. first podcast of a new freaking year, man. Yeah, how's your, how's your new year transition? Transitioning from 2022 to 2023 for you? Uh, I mean, we, me and my wife, we kept it chill. I think mm. because like um, the December was very, very social. Yeah. So we just had a slumber party at home, man. Slumber? You So you had a party still, right? Regardless. No, no, just me and her. Just oh. me and her. <laughs> just two of you, then it's not called a party already. <laughs> it's not, it's not a mean, slumber party anymore. We made it a party. La. No, because we uh. brought out our mattresses to our hall and then we uh. watched a movie. Oh, so that's like, so cute. That's so. He's like a staycation. Newly at home, wet. Oh, <laughs> look. So, li- listen to this newly wet thing, man. Wow, Harish, like bringing up mattresses and having a slumber party. Can you listen yeah, to yourself, man. Harish? Are you hearing yourself? I know, I know. What have I become? No, no, no. But no. I, I think it's uh, it's it's true. Uh, that December was super like you were, it's basically Singapore social for you, like right? December. Yeah. So yeah, so you needed the exact opposite of that, which is very homely, like uh, building a little tent at home and 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 just uh, chilling with wine and watching trashy shows and all that, like, Right. Yeah. But I mean, there was uh something that mixed it up. So close to midnight, we walked over to the next block where one of mm. my close friends lives. Mm-mm. Uh, we had a few cocktails because he he likes making cocktails, and then we walked back and finished the finished the movie. Oh, so I it was see, a I great see. fucking night. Yeah. Oh, what about cool. you, man? I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, having a young kid, obviously he can't count down with us, right? So we it, we kept it chill as well. Stay at home mm. for the most part. Uh, mm. You know, played video games into the wee hours of the morning. But mm. I think I think by the end of it, I was like, uh, by just past midnight, I was really half dead already. La. I was like ready to call <laughs> it quits. Yeah, I was ready to call it quits <laughs> on 2022 and just fall asleep and wake up to 2023. So I literally was like, I, I think I was playing Overcooked. And at a certain point, my, my character was just, just stopped moving and he just froze because I was like asleep at, right there holding the controller. <laughs> and that was shortly after midnight? Uh? Just right after midnight. After watching <laughs> after watching the countdown and, and realizing there was a... Yeah, the annoying thing is that now with streaming and all, there's a huge lag to all these countdown shows. So mm. they were counting down the show and then I already heard fireworks already. You know? So Wait, it's like, because of streaming, there's a huge lag? What do you mean? As in when you, like, you know, you used to watch it on TV and generally the delay, I don't know, was a few seconds or something like that, whenever they yeah. do the countdown. Whereas now, like, when I watch, because I'm watching the streaming on YouTube, right? I'm watching the live oh. stream of the event on YouTube. There's usually, like, I don't know, a 20-second lag or something to what is actually going on. So I already started hearing fireworks when they haven't, had, haven't even started counting down on the countdown show. And uh, then, that annoyed me a lot, lah. That, that I had to, yeah, hey, happy new year. They have that countdown again. Hey, oh, happy, the, you know, the the slower happy new year. Yeah. But then why didn't you watch the one on TV? Because I don't, I don't, not. I don't use, I don't subscribe to cable or anything, so I don't have direct. Channel five. Yeah, yeah. I don't, Channel I don't, I don't have satellite TV or anything. I don't bother. I didn't bother. Oh. Never bothered to set it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to me, oh, it was just like streaming or nothing. Uh, yeah. Basically. Oh, I think SPH will take umbrage at that, man. SPH, why don't SPH? Wanna... I mean, the, the, the satellite TV. La. No, not SPH. La, what am I saying? Mediacorp. <laughs> Mediacorp. Oh, you got you know, oh all your God. media monopolies messed up. The, the, right, the, yeah. did, you, did you go about your Yalabad message you not know, like, not Happy New Year, it's it's a new year? No, la, no la, I, think, I think have a new have year. A new that's year. that's an inside joke for everyone in Yalabad, la, right? Uh, yeah, but I think I for normal so. people, they, they probably get offended if you don't wish them a happy new year. <laughs> right? They'd be like, what the fuck? Like, you don't think you don't think I'll have a good new year this year? Or, you, or they thing. say it to you and you don't say it back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, like, okay, so like, one thing the next day, you know, all those messages in the groups. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, I don't know, man. Like um, some people I haven't spoken to for like years, they send me something that is, yeah. it seems generic. I mean, I still reply it because sometimes, you know, it takes this kind of things to spark a new conversation or reconnection. Mm. Mm-hmm. But do you have have you ever done? I'm guessing no lah. You know, just sent out to like hundreds of people on your contact list. Uh, yeah. This year, I think I made it a point that I won't bother to to reply much at all. Mm. Uh, that's why I love the you know that the emoji function when someone the sends re- you a WhatsApp message. 
And you just send, you just you don't even send an emoji. You just react with an emoji, so a message doesn't come out. It just shows that you acknowledge the message, yeah, but you yeah. don't even, you're not even saying something. So I did a lot yeah. of that this year, lah, because I think, you know, maybe maybe people I uh, I haven't seen in a while they're checking in on on me and my family because of uh, you know yeah. all the things that happened last year. So I just want to react and say, okay, I'm here, but I'm not like happily wishing everybody happy new year and all that kind of things, like, You know. So yeah. so I mean, if if you're yeah. one of those who didn't get a a nice reply from me, it's because I've made a conscious decision not to like be out there shouting happy new year, lah. Yeah. Yeah, I I much prefer the message react emoji than the avatar emoji you used to send in groups. <laughs> Do you remember? Oh, you know, you ever, wait, it was Avatar an myself, la, like a, a Mifi yeah, kind son, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Fucking annoying. Oh, why is it annoying? I thought you <laughs> love no, I thought you love no, that was, shit. You love you no, love no, emojis. No. Like, you're like hundred percent an emoji. You're the guy, you're that boomer that that, <laughs> that you know talks to people thinking that emojis are cool. Uh, no, and everything like emojis as part of messages. Like mm-hmm. I, I think the first time it stuck out was we finished a shoot, right? Yeah. And then everyone was saying thank you messages and all across all the different groups. Mm. And you just kept sending that avatar <laughs> of yourself. Wow, love it. to that every group, right? Damn yeah. fucking <laughs> annoying. There's nothing annoying. It's more personal than a. It's more personal than a generic thumb emoji, right? Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But we can have that emoji debate you. for days uh, about emojis, mm. uh, right? I think there's a, exactly, exactly. a lot of different schools of thought oh, about it. Yeah. Like, yeah. But we are in the new year. Yes. New year, same format. Uh, exciting stuff that we've got planned. Mm. But mm. yeah, uh, nothing's going to change with regards to this format. Uh, correct. Uh, I mean, just to recap also, since <laughs> we're at it, obviously, we, we are very happy that everyone is back here listening to the podcast uh, three mm. times a week on Spotify or Apple or wherever you hear you listen to podcasts. But there are also mm. other places where you can find us, Harish. Where else? Uh, you can find us on Instagram, mm. uh, on TikTok, both mm. of uh, where where we upload video snippets of mm. like one minute extracts that our editor, Tristan, will will expertly select. Um, and you can see our faces. You can yeah. see our reactions. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, stuff you can find there. Where else, Terrence? Uh, we're actually also on YouTube. I think you can find uh, longer clips of ourselves, uh, videos of ourselves uh, from this podcast on YouTube. But also, mm. we not too long ago, we launched our newsletter, Just Try Only, which is mm. uh, which is basically the idea of one topic, two perspectives, and all the shook things, which is mm. what we do. We, we recap one topic from the week prior. Uh, we show, we talk about the two different perspectives on the issue. And we also uh, recap all the shook things that were covered in the, le- the week prior. So it's an yeah. easy way to get uh, to understand what we're you know what people are buzzing about and and what we talked about on our podcast as well. Mm. And yeah. last but not least, the one place where we realize that oh shit, people are listening to us and like talking to each other is mm. Reddit. Uh, Reddit, our yes. wonderful subreddit. Yes. Um, where people discuss what we discuss, call us out if we say something that they don't agree with, mm. uh, and all the links to all these are in the show notes. Yeah. Wow. That was a sweet big recap of of all of our our entire presence on social media, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And now that we're done with that, shall we get into the business side? Uh, not not the business, like get down to fuck, get down to business, mm. get down to business. Yes. In a very ominous, in a very ominous sign, at the start yes. of twenty twenty three, we are going yes. four years back to talk about something from twenty nineteen, that fateful year, and what is that yeah. thing? Um, it was a discussion that honestly, when I was doing research for this, it felt a bit surreal because mm. we had a similar discussion <laughs> back in 2019 on yeah. the podcast. Yes. Um, and that is the discussion around the curbs that certain countries are placing on travelers that are coming from China. Mm. Yeah, That's because right. uh, I mean, recently China. I mean, over the past few months, uh, they've been. Uh, a, a lot of focus on China uh, mm. with regards to COVID and you know like with the Shanghai lockdowns and crazy lockdowns and mm. and then there was protests because of the presidency's uh, third term election mm. and then all of a sudden things started opening up in China yeah. uh, within China yeah. right and last week uh, China announced um, that they would be ending mandatory quarantines on arrival um, uh, if for, for Chinese people and Soon after that, Chinese people can travel uh, without COVID tests. Mm, mm, mm. That's right. 
Yeah. You mean uh, within so, the country, lah? You're saying. Yeah, within the country. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Um, um, but but I mean, e- essentially, there there's been a surge of people who are planning to travel out of China, mm. and that is what caused a lot of countries to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, okay, you can still come, mm. but there will be certain restrictions on your travel. Lah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And and the latest round of headlines is that China is pissed and have threatened to retaliate. Mm, mm. So I mean, some of the countries are like the US. Yeah. Uh, U.S., Japan. Uh, do you know what else? What other countries have, have imposed yes, this? Yes. So, so for U.S., it's mandatory COVID nineteen travelers, mm. uh, COVID nineteen tests, negative um, tests, lah. Right. You have to produce yeah, a negative, negative tests. Test. Yep. Uh, from departure from China, Hong Kong, or Macau. So mm. it's it's uh, those three territories. Mm. Uh, the U.K., um, France, mm. uh, Australia. So Australia's case is a bit interesting, but we can come to that. Mm. Um, India, Canada, Japan, Italy, uh, Spain, Malaysia, mm. Taiwan, mm. South Korea. Uh, Morocco took it to the extreme. La, that there's a ban. Oh, there's a ban wow. of travelers from China. Wow. Um, and Qatar also tests. So, yeah. so for the European countries, Spain, Italy, and France, um, I think that's still... Debated because the EU they held mm. a meeting last Wednesday, I think December towards the end of December, yeah. and it was kind of unresolved. They're having a meeting tomorrow on Thursday to yes. think about it because I think the latest is they rejected Italy's uh push for all EU states to have restrictions. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, so it's just those three individual countries that are doing it. Um, Italy has been saying to the EU, "Yo, all EU countries must curb our uh travelers from." Um, China, but mm. not everyone feels the same way, lah. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean the answer is obvious, isn't it? It's just blatant xenophobia and racism against yeah, Chinese people. Xenophobia is right? fucking terrible. Wake exactly up, Singapore! Come I on, said. wake up, yeah. Singapore! You guys, but but in Singapore we're good, lah. We're good. We're we're like we're okay, lah. Right? Like uh, we're not changing anything. We're, I think we're welcoming Chinese tourists. Uh, and but, and I think the government has come out and said that you know they'll. They'll monitor the situation, but right now there's no need for any any changes, lah, right? Oh, so they have said that. Because I, I yeah. everything I found was more like, okay, there's talk of lifting all COVID restrictions in Singapore, like with masks on mm-hmm. buses and public transport. But uh, how when when did they say that they'll monitor the situation? I think it was a few days ago when uh when when PMA, China is it? Yeah, no, I think uh it was uh Ongi Kang. Ongi mm. Ongi Kung. Ongi Kang Ongi Kung. Ongi Kang. Only yeah, Kong, yeah, only Kong. Yeah, I believe he he said something, uh, to that effect. Uh, uh. yeah. If you, <laughs> if you, I'm sure yeah, you, can, again. You, you can look it yeah. up. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, so, it's yeah, but it, mm. what did he say? No, the 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 gist of it. Um, I mean, there's been, uh, let's see, yeah. Actually, mm-hmm. nothing super recent, no. So, yeah. so like, when when did he say that? Because I mean, he's spoken a lot about China in general over November, mm. December, because cases there were spiking, la. Yeah. But with regards to these restrictions, mm-hmm. uh, do you recall what what uh what he said? Uh, okay. There are Singapore experts like in a week ago. Uh, mm. About six days ago, la, there's no there was a Straits Times headline: no change in Singapore's COVID nineteen measures for travelers from China. Uh, uh, okay, and I okay, think okay. that experts that. also saying that there's no need to add in uh, have additional measures against COVID nineteen. Uh, travel uh, experts from Singapore, la. yeah. Uh, so, so so that means it's the is the experts, la. No, no, MOH MOH is closely monitoring and will adjust uh, border health measures should the need arise. So this is an official statement okay. from ministry, lah. But yeah. Okay. So 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 in Singapore, I think uh, we're we're kind of I don't know we we already kind of passed that really like mentally, right? If if you yeah. think about it. if any, if anything, I think people are afraid of us, right? People are afraid. Uh, I think was it India that 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 placed restrictions on travelers coming from Singapore or something? Uh, was so, it? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. We're not we're not super. Super, super, uh, welcome everywhere either, right? Mm, yeah. So, so, so that's why. Mm. At first, I was thinking like, eh, hey, but why? 
why is this such a big deal? It, it makes sense. I know this is a stark difference from maybe 2019 or 2020 when we did have this discussion mm-hmm. and I was the one saying, no, nah, like, why, why are we getting so panicky? Um, we mm-hmm. should monitor. No, no point putting restrictions or anything. And you were the one saying, no, we got yeah. to restrict. We got to restrict. We got to defend. We got to stay strong. Yeah, correct, correct. But it's science, I think that was, that's yeah. that's science. That's uh, I think in in the absence of information back then versus now, now we mm. we we know a lot more about COVID. We know about um, you know we've we've been through the experience of of different waves and everything. Uh, yeah. I, I think we are much more prepared to to handle uh to handle any kind of COVID surge lah. Oh, so yeah. So okay. So just going back to India. India has made COVID nineteen tests mandatory for travelers from six locations, including Singapore. So, and when yeah, was that? Six days ago, yeah. Six days ago. Uh. Mm. So, so, so it's telling you that we are not we are the ones that people are afraid of as well, uh. Yeah. So at first I was thinking like, okay, like um, restrictions. You know, you'll be more proactive. What would be what would be the downside to that? Um, and mm. how have other countries reacted? Like, and just now I mentioned the Australia case is somewhat interesting, um, mm. because mm. the um, the 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 chief medical officer, right? Mm. Along with uh, a bunch of other of his staff or or people in, in uh, and health officials who who supported the same uh, sentiment and had a strong consensus mm. that if they were to have put curbs on travelers from China, it would be inconsistent. And I quote: "It would be inconsistent with the current national approach to the management of COVID nineteen and disproportionate to the risk." Mm. Basically, they're saying that Australia is prepared enough to not have to put restrictions. Uh, Mm, so mm, mm, the chief medical officer advised the uh, the officials to uh don't change anything, mm. but ultimately uh, Australia did impose curbs lah. Yeah. Um, on and Chinese, it was the Chinese Ministry of travelers. Health. The, on Chinese travelers. Yeah. On, okay. On Chinese travelers. Yeah. And and the Ministry of Health in Australia did put that statement on their website. So it feels like okay, there's definitely um political uh, uh, uh politics at play because. As the leader of a country, also let's say there is a surge, right? Mm. Mm. If other countries who put up restrictions did not face surges, then your country got a surge. Of course, it will fall on you, right? Mm. Yeah, that's right. Um. Then, then I was also thinking, like, hey, but uh, why, why would uh, like the the countries? Of course, there's the science. So the chief medical officer probably his his argument was that you know Australia is adequately vaccinated, there's uh, regu- re- there's um, ready access to treatment, there's high mm. levels of immunity. Yeah. Uh, but, but what else have you seen around the discussions uh, for this? Huh? I mean, uh, one of the things I, I thought about was uh, just a personal anecdote as well, right? Uh, mm. la- I think uh, last week, I went for a friend's gathering like, at his place. Mm. And uh, the day before the gathering, suddenly he sent out a message to a group saying, asking uh, can all the adults coming to my place please take a take a, a COVID nineteen test, uh, you know, mm. before you come? And I, I won't deny it. I did feel a bit like whoa, whoa. That was like, uh, it's kind of annoying, uh, you know, like whoa, what the hell? You don't trust that I I take care of my health or or whatever, lah, uh, you know. And and for a while I was like, oh, I don't want to go really. They kind of they kind of feeling that, uh, you know. So. Mm. But but I think after a while I kind of rationalized that hey, you know like um, uh, it's not a bad thing like, just to take a test it doesn't cost much money. Uh, I haven't taken a test. Uh, admittedly, I haven't taken a test in a while. So why not mm. just you know just just test and make sure that I'm I'm negative and all that. And plus the fact that he has a small uh, tod- uh infant like, right you know mm. who hasn't got and he has, himself hasn't got COVID either like. So. Uh yeah, I mean uh, then after that I, I w- my wife and I just took the test and all and I was like, okay, I'll fine, you know, just take pictures, send it over. Uh a little bit cumbersome, but but nothing nothing to be offended about, like, right? I think people just being a bit more careful with uh with, with when when especially when there's uh you know, more sensitive uh demographics around the house, like, right? So you mm. just take that on a larger scale. You take that on a larger scale. Um, I think in Singapore, because we have such high vaccination rates, right, we don't feel the urgency to 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 impose border restrictions as much, right? Um, mm. To us, it's, and we feel we we we. I think our MOH and and all they feel confident about the the load on the medical system that they can handle whatever it is. 
So I think weighing the pros and cons of, you know, uh, restricting tourists from China, you know, which is a big part of our tourism, our tourism receipts as well, right? Uh, restricting mm. tourism from China versus like, you know, uh, handling a uh, COVID surge and all that. I think they, they weigh the pros and cons and realize maybe uh, I think it's time to open up. Lah. And, uh, but you can't say the same of, of every country. That's why, that's why this is quite an interesting situation that we have here, lah, right? Uh, not yeah, every country yeah. is like Singapore in terms of vaccination rates, in terms of understanding, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 in terms of the medical, or handling the medical on COVID as well. Because mm. I think in China right now, there's a, there's a huge surge of COVID cases in Shanghai that the president yeah. himself has come out and talked about it as a, as a real challenge for them to handle. Um, so, so it's a, it's a very different situation uh, that, that, that from Singapore and other places. But what, what do you think of that? Like, would you be, would you feel that the Chinese people have, uh, have the right to feel offended that they're being, that all, there are all these restrictions being placed on them? Uh, I don't know whether so much about it being offensive. Um, mm. Because, okay, one thing is, it's not clear what kind of test uh, results they require. Is it ART or PCR? Uh, I'm I'm guessing PCR because they they PCR right? Or maybe actually ART wouldn't be as long as I think it needs to be documented. Like for example, I know the US one you need documentation of a negative test. So yeah. I'm supposing ART if but it has to be administered by a medical professional. Yeah, because yeah. okay, so the thing is right. You know, like even your friend asked you to do test right. It was ART la, not PCR yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. If it was PCR then how? Uh, then that would be a you, <laughs> I would fuck you and your Christmas gathering. I'm never coming for your Christmas gatherings ever again. ART is still okay. I can go Watson's and buy it off the shelf. But PCR, you like, fuck that shit. Yeah. yeah. Because, okay, so so the, the thing is, right, I remember like when I traveled last December, mm-hmm. the PCR, you know, I mean, I don't know what the cost for PCR are, uh, but they are yeah. expensive, la, right? Mm, yeah, that's and, right. And I think... The, because I think like right now I was also trying to say what is the is it an offense thing or is it just some other thing and I know cost can be something if you're mm. traveling out um, they do add up um, on the when I was thinking for the the officials in Australia to say okay don't ch- we don't need to change anything so don't change then I was thinking like but why why not just be more proactive mm. but then it occurred to me that if they were to impose mm. can you Im- imagine the amount of like legislation and I don't think it's just a on-off switch, lah. You know, you uh, talking about impose meaning that uh, like the curb uh, the restrictions a, and all lah. For a country to have restrictions on Chinese travelers, and then subsequently having to deal with all the all the testing and all, everything that they need to do, is it? Yeah, yeah. So and you, also you're saying like, like the load on the medical system would be pretty overwhelming, lah. Yeah, so I I think so, and like what happens then if like someone uh is yeah, it just feels there will be a lot of admin and logistics. Then it becomes a thing like, okay, is it mm. worth putting the investment there to protect uh, the future um, uh, impact and all? So that's why it's interesting to see how the different countries are reacting and why. Uh, one thing mm. that I thought um, was interesting was also South Korea. For them, it was it's a big hit on the tourism and travel industry because they get a lot of travelers from China coming to them. Yeah. Yeah. That's so right. even the airlines and the agencies were like, "Hey, fuck! If you put restrictions, of course people can still come, but mm. people might not come as readily, Yeah. You know, and, and in uh, an industry that has, the, the in an industry that's been decimated by uh, travel, uh, and for South Korea because China they yeah. haven't been able to travel for fucking long, right? So it's almost yeah. like prolonging the pain, la. Yeah, yeah, and and I think uh. You, you see a very you see that the people in these countries like for example I was in Japan recently right you see that the people in these countries they are quite ambivalent I, I not say ambivalent uh, sorry they're quite conflicted about uh, Chinese travelers returning to their shores because uh, I think mm. the whole infrastructure the whole tourism infrastructure in a lot of these places uh, for example you go to Japan there's so many Chinese speaking Japanese guides and all that you know and uh, mm. there's, there's stores that are catered to Chinese tourists, like the, the stores that sell cosmetics and all that, the duty-free stores that just, the signages are all in either Japanese or Chinese, you know? And mm. all these stores probably have been hit, uh, you know, all these stores, all these all these uh, tourist, tourism um, operators and all that, they've probably been really badly hit by everything that's happening. Like. 
But at the same time, um, so so you would think that they would want to welcome back the the Chinese tourists, right? But at the same yeah. time, uh, you you get a sense that they are very wary of uh, foreigners coming and bringing COVID nineteen to them. Uh, even for for Singaporeans, for example, you know, like uh, us being there, I, I think overall for me this trip, I, I, mean, I did feel hey, there's. Japan is not as uh, the hospitality in Japan is not as as welcoming as warm as I remember it to be la. and and I was wondering why was I feeling like that was it just a uh, you know personal a few personal bad experience and all but but what I I, I kind of realized was it's probably because as a Singaporean I'm so uh, I'm already so past COVID in the sense that I'm really like yeah let's 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 move past COVID and not not be too uh, overly wary of everything but in Japan there's still taking steps, taking a lot of steps to try and protect the the, the citizens from getting COVID because I think the vaccination rates aren't as high, especially amongst the elderly lah, in Japan compared mm. to Singapore. Mm. So there are a lot of little things are like, you know, the way that um when you go to a, a buffet in, in, in any restaurant or in a hotel, you have to wear gloves, plastic gloves when, when taking your food. Um, you know, there are all these in every single restaurant, there are all these acrylic barriers still up between between seats, between uh, within even within the same table and everything, so you get a sense that they're still very wary of the virus and its spread and and how foreigners might be bringing in uh, different variants and things like that lah. Um, and that has an effect on on how a tourist feels about the country as well lah, You know, so mm. so it's a I think it's a yeah, people are very conflicted about oh we we need the tourist dollars but at the same time we we're kind of afraid of what tourism you know large swaths of of people will bring from other countries as well. So I don't think it's exclusive to just Chinese tourists feeling that way uh, as well. And, and, and you know, like, like what, like India uh, placing restrictions or at least demanding uh, COVID tests from Singaporeans. I don't think it's something that we necessarily need to take offense against. It's just, uh, you know, people, they're, they're at different stages of coming out of COVID. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it just feels so much like deja vu because mm. literally, you know, like one thing that was being discussed back then was uh, like when there was first rumblings of COVID was like things about, okay, uh, should we test Chinese travelers? Is China sharing the data, enough data? Are they being true mm. or, or, or being truthful? And literally now, even last mm. Friday, the World Health Organization urged Chinese officials to regularly share specific and real-time information on COVID, um, mm. it invited Chinese scientists to present detailed data, but China has rejected criticisms of its COVID data and and um, it just feels like, oh, fuck, all this is happening again. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, just now what, what you're saying about how it affects a country's uh, image of of travel, yeah, it, it is, like, I, I, I would imagine more countries placing restrictions because... Uh, like the Chinese travelers also are at, at a higher risk like, for a mm. few reasons that I've mm. gathered. One of which is like the vaccination rates in China are not the highest. Mm. Mm. Um, the vaccines that were used were all the locally produced Sinovac, right? Mm. 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 Um, yeah. And they rejected all other vaccines um, from the Modernas and the Pfizer's and all that. And yeah. Sinovac, I think the efficacy is not as high. Mm. So there's been a spike in December. So, and they are... There are strains being detected in China. Of course, you can argue that people have I I vaccinations and immunity, but it just feels like, wow, if there's a surge and people get COVID, it just mm. feels like, oh my God, it's it's inviting danger. Like, because you and I both know people who have gotten COVID two, even three times already, right? Mm, 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 right? Yeah. So, so it just feels like, oh shit, like, um, uh, and yeah a bit, a bit surreal and this is ahead of Chinese New Year right so mm. even in China there's going to be a lot of travel internally from the uh, uh, cities to the urban areas which hasn't happened for the past three years mm, mm. yeah that's right, right? the that's past right. two years yeah so yeah so so it feels like huh okay um, but what do you think Singapore will end up doing uh? Uh, I think Singapore is tough man we I don't think we can afford to close our borders uh, much longer in terms of mm. uh, you know for various reasons, like like, like, like the, I mean, tourism is one thing, but also just talent and 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 just uh, commerce and everything. We it's very tough for us to close our borders, and maybe it might even be a a good thing that when everyone everyone else seems to be be you know closing their borders a little bit, that we still remain open. And and because I think 
Singapore's on the list, lah. Of, of, I think someone someone did a poll of where Chinese tourists want to visit. You know, now that mm. COVID, now that opening up, and Singapore is on the list of the top five. You know, alongside other oh, countries yeah. like Japan, and South Korea, and all. So maybe that might push more Chinese tourists to want to visit Singapore rather than visit other places. Um, so, because I think yeah, so for Singapore, it's tough, man, for us to. Uh, con- you know, to to close our borders again, or, or have more restrictions put back, because uh, yeah, the the businesses have all suffered so much in the last couple of years, and uh, yeah, it just feels like we're we're waking up to after uh, a war has happened, and we're just sort of you know assessing the damage from from what from the nuclear bomb that was dropped. Uh. So many businesses have just like uh, folded and died. Nowadays, I, I walk to a, you know, I go to a new place that I haven't visited in a few years and I'm like, oh, wow, those businesses are gone, you know, those, the restaurant that was here, that was here for many years is, is gone and, or the uncle that used to run this place is no longer there and all that lah. So it's kind of, mm. it's kind of like, I, I can't imagine if something, like we started to close borders or put up restrictions again lah. It'd be so catastrophic for a lot of businesses here. Yeah. Yeah, but also, I don't know, because I mean, there is what should um happen, uh, mm. but then politically, right, it's going to be damn touchy, sir. Uh, you mean politically for for the government I in think Singapore? For, yeah, for, for any government, uh, for mm. any government. It yeah. just feels like, um, uh, yeah, if there are people who are going to be like, why take the risk? Mm. You know, shouldn't we be braced to immediately turn on like okay, uh, uh, for any country, given that Singapore is small, also, so I, I don't know, man. Now it seems like we are taking on the roles of we have switched the roles of Terence and Harish like from three years ago. No, I mean you are the Harish that does slumber parties with the mattress in the living room now. <laughs> now you got you got everything to lose. You got the home. You got the wife. You got you got you know all that to lose. So that's why now you are the conservative. Right? It's normal. Hey. You know the statistic no, is no. that as you get older, you know you you just generally tend towards more conservatism. Yeah. <laughs> no, next thing, be, next, thing be, next thing you'll be next thing you'll be next thing you'll be you know uh, <laughs> you'll be at the wear white event and everything like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, we've been deal. living together uh, for a year and a half already. So little, uh, like nothing much changed aside from the rings on our fingers, la. And age, la, um, age yeah, yeah. yeah. I I would say that I'm I'm curious to see what happens, la, because I think if yeah, that's why in the other countries, um, I mean, you see some random statistics come out. I think Taiwan tested like on a on a given day five hundred and ninety seven travelers from China and. 12% were positive. Mm. And then you see mm. some stats go out of control. Like um, uh, there was another country that found 50% of travelers on two flights um, were COVID positive. But even on Reddit threads and articles, they took that stat and they said half of Chinese travelers are positive, mm. which is fake, mm. la, you know? Yeah. And glad glad to see people call it out, but it just feels like, oh, okay. This feels yeah. like... um. Something's something's brewing, lah. Something's brewing, man. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see, lah. We'll see. I mean, one yeah, thing we'll for see. sure is you'll start, uh, you know, seeing a lot more Chinese tourists, uh, mm. on, on the streets. Uh, I think that's something that we've not, uh, we've not seen or felt for a couple of years now, lah. Right? You know, big, mm-hmm. big Chinese tour groups and all that. Uh, but yeah, yeah. so for a while it was it was interesting. It was a interesting uh, experience, interesting feeling of like going to Orchard Road and. And Orchard Road is not packed with tourists and all that, but uh, I think yeah, we we we're, we're gonna start see that to see that surge again, lah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. we shall see how this develops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, uh, but yeah, I guess it's a good time to transition to, uh, something closer to home. Hey, and Terrence, that's not a segue, la. What happened to your segue prowess? No, yeah, la, I was just about you to get... called out the transition. I was just about to to get to it, just as. Because it's about, uh, you know, we're talking a lot about Chinese tourists coming out and coming out to the world, like, right? Coming back out uh, to the world. Yeah. But our next topic is on the topic of coming out, but not necessarily yes. to the world, like, but actually more within the classroom. And what is this topic about? Yeah. Like? Eh, how's um, that? How's that? That's not, that's not bad. Like, no, right? but, it's not bad. no it's, it was good. It was good. But uh, you didn't need to say, okay, now it's about time to transition. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Come on, be, Terrence of 2023. Come on, yeah, man. Let's be, a bit, let's be a bit more subtle about it. But I'm also <laughs> talking to the Slumber Party, Slumber Party Harish now. We need to be a bit slumber more... Slumber Party Harish. The Slumber Party emojis, <laughs> thumbs up emojis Harish. You know, I need to be a bit more uh, on the nose with this kind of thing. Uh. <laughs> no, no, no. Now you're the Segway Prince. Uh. Not the ah, Segway okay. King. Uh. Yeah, Segway yeah, Prince. Yeah. 
Yep. Um, but yes, it is, a, I guess, an opinion piece published by none other than The Straits Times. Mm. Um, and it was titled, Is It Okay for Gay Teachers to Come Out in Class? Mm-hmm. Um, with, uh, and it just, uh, gay teachers list qualms and parents urge caution. So it was just um, like a, a piece that, that posed that question and also mm. shared sentiments from a few teachers who do identify as gay but haven't come out. Um, a couple of whom who have come out and then some reactions from parents. Mm, mm, mm. That's right. Yeah. So, so I mean, just, just to like go over it in brief, um, basically, I mean, since, since the National Day Rally, when PM Lee, uh, announced that the section, sex, section 377A would be repealed, there'd been a lot of talk, right? Yeah. Um, so this article just talked, spoke to a few teachers and, mm. uh, who believe that it's um they haven't hidden mm. uh if teachers uh, if the students notice but they've never come out and said la, mm. um uh, openly um and then uh they juxtapose that with like um the the ongoing discussion that education in singapore should be anchored in the values of society la, which is more like okay man woman uh the the nucleus of the family mm. um and 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 some uh uh, some teachers, I mean, basically, from what I gather, it feels like a lot of the teachers who are gay mm. don't really come out because they know there will be discrimination or it could result in even their jobs being affected. Yeah. Um, and just anecdotally, from the few parents they spoke to in this article, I think there was only one out of three who said, no, she's fine. The rest were like, okay, keep your personal and private uh, and work life separate. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. yeah. But anything stuck out for you for the, from the article? Um, I think, yeah, it's a, uh, this kind of discussions are inevitable, right? Because of mm. the decriminalization of, of gay sex. So and then, then you start to, I mean, that's what uh, a lot of the, you know, uh, anti-LGBT or not anti anti-repeal people were saying, like, right? That, mm. that these uh, conversations about, about, uh, com- you know, homosexuality and all that uh, become more, common and out in the open, right? Mm. Uh, and whereas, like, previously, I think it was a don't ask, don't tell, don't talk about it kind of policy. Um, but I think there were some things uh, that one of the, the the gay teachers highlighted was that him not, not coming out in, in public, like, not in the big class to his students, but coming out to students who ask him individually or come to him with problems, or him or her with problems, uh, apparently it has helped their mental health uh, in the sense that if those if those students are also tr- struggling with issues about their sexuality and all that, it actually really helps them that they can confide in someone who understands where they're coming from or has a lived experience of what they're going through, and mm. they are more willing to talk to them about their problems. And and I think while they pointed out that he was uh, sexually abused by an older man or something like that, but he didn't dare to report it to police because he was afraid they were he was afraid that the police would would, you know, uh, tell his parents that he's gay. La. And I think mm. he confided in the teacher and the teacher was like, you know, uh, no, we'll make sure that, that whatever happens is, uh, you, you still, you still we, we will report to the police with you and we'll make sure that uh, your, your sexuality is not the, is not something that is discussed with your parents and all that. So mm. that to me, I think it really crystallizes like the, the importance of, of, you know, uh, the the important role that a lot of uh, gay teachers will have for for the you know the the, the population of people who are struggling with their sexuality and all that, um, mm. and it's just uh, it's, yeah, it's, I I guess it's just quite unfortunate that that you know for for every one good story here like that, there's probably ten stories of of teachers uh feeling like they're being discriminated against because of their sexuality, like, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they did speak to one teacher uh, mm. who's 30 years old yeah. uh, and who decided to come out to his class of 17 to 18-year-old students during mm. a humanity session. Mm, mm. Um, and then uh, he said he was always encouraged to be authentic when teaching. Mm. So why not have this part of his life also be authentic? Mm. Um, and then he said, yeah, the the surprisingly for him, the students didn't feel anything negative and they were very supportive that um that, that they had a gay teacher and like for the mm. LGBT, LGBT students 
uh, they finally found someone, according to him. Mm, but mm. I mean, the general concern, one of the biggest concerns for the teachers interviewed was like, sure, you can be open, but if one child mentions it to a parent, mm. it could snowball. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, like, I remember watching one interview on a US talk show where um, they were talking about whether or not sex education or t- uh, gender issues should be discussed with kids in school. Mm, um, mm. And I think the case there, if I remember correctly, was for seven to eight year olds, the teachers were giving them like exercises to think about, okay, are they, it's okay if you're not, if you're not a girl or a boy or uh, you're non-binary. Mm, so mm. there was a protest amongst the parents. They're like, what the fuck is going on? So they brought some of the parents on the talk show and of yeah. course some people from the LGBTQ community. Yeah. And at first, I mean, I I am still not really sure how to think about this. And I think being mm. a parent, there are so many perspectives that did not occur to me. Like, and one was uh, two parents who said that, okay, they actually have no issues and they are supporters of the LGBTQ movement. It's mm. just that by it being taught in schools, mm. um, they will now have to have the conversation with their kids which mm. maybe they were planning to have when the kids were older. So suddenly yeah. it is thrust upon them. And I was like, oh shit, I never thought about it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and, 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 and I mean, I don't know, as a parent, like what, what, how, do you, how are you thinking about this? I mean, of course there's like, for me, okay, just marriage, slumber party, Irish, you know, no kids yet. But as a parent, yeah. any additional perspectives? Um, yeah, I mean, last week I was talking to a couple of parents as well who, <laughs> uh, who said that, yeah, that exactly that happened uh. Their conversation was thrust upon them because they <clears throat> they signed their kids up for uh, one of those uh, holiday camps, you know, and they had to fill out a form. And on the form was asking for the gender of the the child, male, female, or non-binary. So at the end of the day, when the uh... kids came home and talking to their parents, they asked, "Mommy, Daddy, what is non-binary?" You know. <laughs> so this is truly how old are they... the kids? How old are the kids? I mean, seven and and uh, in Singapore, and nine. yeah, yeah, in Singapore, in Singapore, yeah, yeah. So I mean, you see, the way you're reacting to it, right, is it really highlights, I guess, the generational difference uh, between the teacher's generation and even the kids, right? Where I think yeah. the, via social media, via everything that the kids watch and all that, they're much more open to, they're much more open and, and exposed to, you know, um, whether it's LGBT characters in, in shows or LGBT personalities and all that. So to them, it's it's is probably not as big a deal, right? Uh, mm. And but then for our generation, it's like we are very shocked when we see that, hey, wow, this non-binary thing is 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 being listed there and all that, like you know. Uh, and the thing is that we are not, we're not well equipped to to explain it to our children mm. either, like right. <laughs> mm. That's the thing, like like children ask us, but actually maybe we are much less equipped to describe it compared to let's say a, a fifteen year old or sixteen year old kid, like right. Um, yeah. So, so that's the strange transition that I think um, our our generation is stuck in, like, right? But then, we, what are your what are your parents? Uh, what are your sorry, sorry? You finish your thought? Yeah, no, no, no. I think yeah, maybe related to that. I guess the, those my friends, those parents, they, I think they, yeah, they, they, they were just basically yeah forced to sit down and and talk to their kids about oh you know some just talking about why how some people do not fall into the category of male and female. And 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 uh, you know they they that's how they identify la, as as non binary la. So, so I think is is they, they took it as a trying to explain the facts, what the facts were la, You know, in in the sense that mm. I think you, you couldn't. It's very tough to go into a debate about oh is it biology or is it uh how you what you what you think your gender is blah blah things like that. But it's clearer to just state what uh what it means to be non binary. It just means that you don't identify as being a male. Or female, right? Uh, mm, whether it's because mm, of you believe biologically that it's there's a there's something that's not uh, not male, not female, or you you that's how you identify. I think that is a question for later. But yeah. just stating that there's uh, some people who you know don't identify that way, then maybe mm. I think it makes it easier for for the kids. Because I think yeah yeah I think um uh even for myself also like just learning how to explain certain things about the world to a, a child is very uh there's a tendency to to for young parents and all to want to hide reality from the child. Uh. 
And from more and more literature that I'm reading, they say that it's not a good thing to to tell a lie or you know or try to hide the reality from your child by masking it as something else. It's better to be factual about it um, and and really try and state the facts, the most simple facts of of what mm. of, of the situation to the child, like, you know. And mm. it will lead to awkward situations where your child will say random awkward things to strangers. But that's better in the longer term than to to lie to your child and keep them in a state of um uh of of you know trying to keep them innocent and not know about what the facts of the world are, such that later they, they get a very rude shock when they discover the truth and realize that oh actually yeah, my parents haven't been telling me the the the, the, the truth about a lot of things, like, you know. So mm. so uh yeah, there's a lot of uh when you ask this question about parents, I think it's a very complex question that, yeah. that uh you know it's still it's still out there like how to talk to your child about difficult topics or, or more more complicated topics like that uh like like people i think a lot of young parents are still finding their feet about it so there's no one right answer to it la. Yeah. and i guess it also depends on the age of the child la, right correct, correct uh, because yeah. uh, because i mean of course if you're like two two or three in nursery mm. and all and they're already asking kids like um to to identify that's like yeah like, it's, it's very complicated like but mm, coming back to mm. this issue i think there's gender and then there's sexuality like and i think like uh oh, I, I cannot imagine uh being a teacher and ultimately i think what what uh the debate centers around is like not coming out you know not making mm, an mm. announcement but yeah. just that if you're heterosexual, you can share details about your family or you can talk about your child, you can talk about it. And mm. sometimes that factors into teaching. Like, I mean, as a teacher, mm. you spend how many hours a day with 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 these kids, right? Yeah. So parts of your personal life might, might bleed into it. Like. So I don't really agree with the argument that some parents take that, oh, you keep your private and personal life separate. Of yeah. course, your personal life, you don't want to fucking just tell all, like, you know, all your family problems <laughs> just come and dump it on your kids. Yeah. But like, I think it's just like... um. Yeah, how to navigate it as someone who say is gay, uh, you have a boyfriend and especially when it's almost like, um, you know, that don't ask, don't tell policy in, mm-hmm. in the US. Yeah. It's it's a bit hush-hush, a bit hush-hush. But now when the whole discussion is coming to the fore, what what do these teachers do, la, you know? Yeah. Um, Because I can imagine like the apprehension also, you know, if you come out, confirm there'll be some people either within the school's um, uh, authorities or parents who will make noise like then it becomes like wow, do you want to go down that path like? Yeah, and and I mean, is it even realistic to think that a teacher can can so like really separate his his or her uh identity from from what he's teaching and all that? Right? Is it even <laughs> realistic to think to think of it that <laughs> the way? One thing, the one thing I know, like in secondary school, you know, when we're all just like uh, horny previews preview person preview fucking yeah horny boys we are yeah. horny boys um i remember whenever like there was a you know attractive female teacher that came mm. Mm. like really teacher and all of course we'd be hey you know is she married is she blah. but it was almost like a, a a vault that sort of info right mm. like you almost never knew yeah um actually the, there, was, the, there was something i wanted to ask you do you do you recall uh, teachers being very open about their personal lives back in school and things like that. Okay, so off the top of my head, I think if they were married, they might be a bit more open. But if mm. they were not married, right, I don't recall knowing anything about them. Yeah, yeah. That's that's my recollection of, of uh, teachers in school as well, that we knew almost nothing about their, about their life outside of school, right? Uh, yeah. Other than that, maybe, yeah, like they're married because they obviously you call them Mrs. Tan or whatever. They're married and, and all that. But I did, never knew like how many kids they had. I never yeah. knew they had daughter or son. I never knew what they did on the weekends. And and now I think about it, it's crazy because it's like someone that you practically see every day, but you have no clue about what their lives their life is like outside of the office or outside of, of the workplace and all. Uh it sounds yeah. crazy to me, like because you know, in this day and age we like we share so much. Once you follow someone on Instagram, you kind of, you even know what their daily schedule is like, yeah, pretty much, right? You get all the yeah. updates and all that. But so it's, it's. I'm just like, wow, that means maybe back then really the, the, there was a very, uh, I mean, maybe back then, maybe even now, I'm not sure. Maybe they are, they were much more protective of their, their personal lives yeah. from, from students, right? I think so. And I remember 
a few times seeing te- like my teachers with kids, I was like, oh fuck, they yeah. actually have kids. Yeah. It felt like yeah, they're like this this surreal kind of like fictional Figures, characters. Right? Yeah. yeah, these avatars la. But at the yeah. same time, I don't know, man. Sometimes I feel maybe that is better. Like mm. uh like like what you said, right? Like right now you with Instagram and all, you immediately get a peek into someone's personal yeah. life, la. And yeah. Like sometimes, is it is it necessary? Is it good? Is it healthy? Must every interaction be something that really goes that personal? I don't know, man. I don't know. Like now when I think back about my relationship with my stu- uh, teachers last time, it was very, yeah, you know, there are certain teachers who are funnier, there are certain teachers, but I, I, I like that it was just, I wouldn't say superficial, but yeah. Yeah. it was, you know, even transactional, all those sound very negative. But yeah. it was focused. La. And I don't yeah. know, maybe it's also the generation, the, the way people think about it. Like, and imagine students these days, they're like, no, if I'm getting knowledge from someone, I need to know who they are. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think what you said about age really matters. La. Now that we're yeah. talking about it, I recall one instance and I was doing, I was, uh, you know, I was one of those kids that, that attended a lot of tuition classes, la, right? And I went for one of those like uh, very elitist kind of like English language tuition things, one of those uh, private tuition centers where, you know, it was small classes and the teachers were, the teachers were basically uh, angmos, lah, right? From, they, yeah. they always got these UK or Australian teachers to come and teach English to Singaporean kids and all. I remember one time there was a, you know, like, you know we had that, that, that kind of oral exam kind of uh, practice, lah, right? Where they show you a picture and you describe what is 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 going on in the picture, and then mm. and just based on what you talk about it, like it's supposed to be a you're supposed to make a story out of whatever you see, lah. So I remember one day this this uh one of the teachers, uh, it was a female teacher, and uh, I think she married everything. She one day she came in and then she showed us this uh brochure of a uh, a Mother's Day bro- brochure, lah. Like you know, uh, why not you know be a great great kid a great uh, kid to your mother and, and buy her a present this Mother's Day and the present the picture of the present was a full set of like uh, cooking utensils la, crockery and all that la. so she asked us as as I think I was maybe like 10 or 11 back then she asked us what do you all do you, what, what do you all think of this is this a, is this what do you see in this picture you know and I, I remember just thinking oh okay you know in my typical uh, primary school good student thing I was like yeah yeah you know this is a it's a very nice thing that that you know this brochure is encouraging young kids to to be nice to their to their mothers on Mother's Day and to buy them gifts and all that. And I just recall very clearly the teacher that like, looked at us and gave us a very stern no. Is this what you want to encourage? Is this what you want to encourage like uh from women to only to only stay at home and be in the kitchen? And I, I just recall that whole interaction and I was very confused. Because I, what I thought was like, oh, well, if I bought my mother this set of, of kitchen things with my own like you know, uh, pocket money I saved up all that, it's such a sweet gesture to her, you know. That's that was going through my mind, and but she was so militant that it was a bad thing and all that, and uh, I I think it left a very deep impression on me, like, And how positive or negative, I I can't say for sure, but now the fact that I can remember this like when this was a memory when I was ten or eleven years old tells you that uh. It was quite jarring for me, like right, as a kid. And and, mm. and and yeah, so maybe yeah, maybe there is some merit to 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 to, to what you were saying, like that they really need to think about the age of the child before they just blanket say, Okay, this this because this is now uh you, you know, like repealing three seven seven eight part of the law means it's open and okay to talk to every ch- child about it, like, you know. There's certain yeah. topics that I think uh, require a bit more nuance and require some maturity from the child as well, right? That I, I'll admit at 10, 11, I did not have the maturity to understand the, the, the point that the teacher was making and I was just, I think I was quite confused. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's why, but of course, if, you, if by saying that, it also feels like we're telling, um, you know, gay teachers, okay, you cannot talk about it. No, it's just like, it's, um, that's why I thought like the, the example in the article about how, you know, it, it comes out like to support where support is needed. Yeah. Uh, but whether or not it needs to be out in the open, I don't know, man. Mm. I don't know. That's that's tricky. I mean, the fact that that, that sex ed class now seems more rampant 
Mm. Or like more, rampant. more common. Rampant. Yeah, more common. More common. <laughs> Slumber party Harish. <laughs> Slumber party, conservative Harish talking. Rampant. Oh, terrible. Sex ed, sex sexual ed Rampant. It's going like a virus. Yeah. No, no, no. It's more, it's more common. Like, I honestly don't remember having that. Like even a sex, sex ed class in school. Yeah. Um, Because I think I mentioned it on this podcast before. The, the way I found out how sex happens. Like, mm, um, mm. Was at popular bookstore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it did happen. I think in bio class, we learned about the human anatomy. I'm saying, but it was secondary assume, school. That's, yeah, yeah, secondary, that's secondary school. school. Oh, yeah, yeah, correct. But now, school. now sex ed is in primary school. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, that's different. That's definitely different, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so popular bookstore like left an imprint in my in my head also, and yeah, that yeah. encyclopedia that me and my friend opened up, yeah. and we're like, oh, what but, is but, this cross-sectional diagram? Yeah, correct. correct. But one okay. thing I think that the 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 article also mentioned when talking to the teachers, how do they, um. You know, they, they, they want the teachers, let's say the MOE wants the teachers to suppress that part of their identity, like, right? Their sexuality. Mm. Uh, and it's so unfair. Like, is it like, you know, expecting that it's just 1% of who I am and and, and, and it's totally not. It's, it's a big part of how I identify as a person, like, right? Mm. And um, I think that's very true, like, right? As a, as a minority in any way, generally your identity is much more tied to to your feelings as that, as that particular minority, like, right? Yeah. Um, and and uh, especially ver- heterosexual versus homosexual. I think for heterosexual people, we don't think about our, our sexuality a lot as as a big identifier of who we are as people, like, right? To us, it's like oh, it's just I'm just like that, like you know, it's normal, like, right? You know. Mm. But when you are a minority and and you've been you know you've you've felt discriminated against uh, for a big part of your life, or you feel like your voice is not heard. Uh, I would say that that is a much bigger part of your who you identify as a person, like, right? So it's a mm. very hard thing to ask them to separate their identity from from what they are, like. And I know it's not an equivalent example, like, but but the truth is like, well, like one of those swakus who, when I was eighteen years old, I was like, oh, you know, I tot- I totally cannot uh, stand being in Singapore. I want to leave Singapore and go overseas and move overseas and study and all these kind of things. But then when I actually moved overseas and was in a university in the US and all that, then I started to realize there were a lot of quirks and things that, that really made me feel Singaporean, right? Mm. And then I started to learn how to... to that, that was a very big part of my identity. And then it just was a... I identified much more as a Singaporean after leaving Singapore, right? As being a minority mm. overseas and everything. So, so I can totally empathize with like if you're a gay teacher you feel that it's so unfair and so difficult that you're being asked to suppress that part of your identity because it's such a much bigger marker of who you are as a person and and you are not able, then because of that, you're not able to give your full self to your job, right? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and I think like, I know when we were talking about the repealing of 377A, we did also discuss how there were some reactions from people from the community saying that yeah. All this attention on the community is making their lives harder. Mm. You know, the, the fact that now there's more eyeballs on like, oh, what do teachers do and, and how they mm-hmm. do this? Oh, it just feels like, yeah, like uh, everything is being being scrutinized now. So, and and doesn't seem like the stance for schools is, is going to change in the, in the near term. La. So, mm. so yeah, maybe it's time we, we brought back like the guests from past, uh, you know, like... um. Uh, Sean, uh, yeah. we spoke to, so who's like a yeah. quite a quite a big spokesperson in the community to get get thoughts on like everything that's been happening in with regards mm. to three seven seven A and LGBTQ issues, la. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, even like Pink Dot, we don't even know what what's the what's the next iteration of Pink Dot going to be, because they've they've sort of achieved a, a big goal of theirs, right? A big lofty goal was to get three seven seven A repealed, la. So what's the yeah. the future for something like Pink Dot, la, Like the movement, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's um it's uh, I think it's there's gonna be a lot of talk this year. La. Yeah. It's gonna yeah. be a lot of talk this year about this topic. So we we'll just see how it develops. Yeah. Well, yeah. How it that was develops. Slumber party harish. Uh, slumber party harish. La, right. <laughs> 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 but yes, uh speaking of watching how it develops and uh, we always love seeing how conversations develop on our Reddit thread or our subreddit as well, right? So what is your yeah. one big uh, short comment that you've seen recently? 
Wait, uh, would you like to go first while I while yeah, I, I think uh, uh, Jungle Jimbo eighty eight provided a very good answer to something that we were discussing on our last podcast. Is uh, what is the biggest time difference between uh, you know, time zones around the world? And the answer is uh, twenty six hours between the Howland Islands and the Line Island, uh, the Line Islands. So, so that's uh, apparently yeah, it's not just us who have been asking this question. I think. This was this was cross posted from another subreddit as well, like, right? So mm. twenty six hours time difference between between places. That's pretty crazy, man. I feel like there's some well, there's some interesting uh you know uh Christmas movie or what that can be made from that. But how is it twenty six hours? Um, that means the date, like, right? It's just the date, the difference in the date and the in the times, like, right? So it's one full, like it's one and a half days behind. One and a bit. One and a bit, uh, yeah. Yeah. One so and that, a bit. That, that, that place lives in a... I mean, it's a different time zone, like, right? So yeah. you you just be on a different day, like, but technically you're only... You're about only two hours. You're only two hours right away from from, from the same spot that the, the place was. The, the, other, the other place was. The other time zone was. Technically, yeah. like, technically. Remember, time is, time is just a concept that we... We use to measure something that is actually I- immeasurable, right? Yeah, 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 correct, correct. Yeah. Um. Yeah. This so you sound like you are, you are like you are in a brain brain freeze moment, like trying brain to, freeze, trying to process hours, it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 gonna go down that 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 path, man. That rabbit uh, hole. And, <laughs> that rabbit hole and see. So yeah, cheers yeah. to Jungle Jimbo for for posting yep. that. Yeah. Cool. Okay, uh, so my, my one short comment was something from actually a month ago um, mm. that I think I missed back then, but mm. I wanted to give a shout out to Rock, Rock Groundbreaking 42 uh, mm. for a comment on Yalabad 342 when we decided to talk about the Malaysian King on to decide on XPM and Singapore might soon have an extra mm. 1.5 hour, hours of quiet time. Uh, <laughs> they, they posted something... Uh, you know, with all this uh, AI to generate images from text, right? Mm. Um, they actually tried typing uh, man in cycling spandex standing next to a Tesla car, <sighs> which was something we mentioned on a previous podcast. Uh-huh. And they posted a link to the image. Uh. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's quite funny. La. Like, uh, you can tell it's a, it's a guy <laughs> in spandex standing next to a Tesla car. Have you, have you seen the image? I've not, I've not seen it, but it sounds crazy. Really. Okay, I, I, I WhatsApp it to you right now. So, it was just like, oh, okay, that's cool. I haven't really played around with that that sort of like text to image that much, but mm-hmm. uh, maybe we can even start using it for cover art and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be quite, a lot of it is quite, I think the quality really matters, lah, right? Uh, the quality is very, yeah, very. Yeah. Uh, it varies a lot between the bots and, and as well as how you describe the image and all. But yeah, I yeah. think it could be interesting. Yeah, and I mean the quality is improving like super fast, lah, because the the algorithm is learning and also. So kudos to you, man. Yeah. Cheers to that. A month later. Cool. Cool. And, all right. Uh, and your one, one shock thing. Uh, my my one short thing uh, is a slight callback to what I said at the start of the podcast, which was the mm. slumber party that I had. Yes. Um, and I mentioned that we watched a movie, right? Mm, mm. So we were thinking about a few different options to of a movie to watch, and we figured, okay, it's New Year's Eve. It'd be nice to have something that is a good story. It's a good movie, but it's it's a uh, it makes you feel uh good inside, lah, like warm mm. and fuzzy, you know. Yeah. And I w- we decided to watch Little Miss Sunshine. Mm, mm. Uh, which is a movie from 2005 with like Steve Carell just as he was breaking into Hollywood and a few other uh, maybe not so known actors at the time mm. and I know that you have said very good things about it I know mm. it's a, quite a critically acclaimed movie but holy shit it is so fucking good I think mm. it's one of the best movies I've watched in a long time Yeah. Um, like we watched it on New Year's Eve and then the next day we went to my wife's family's house and we watched it again with them Um. Was and, it a situation it, of like? Was it a situation of basically you uh, being overbearing and forcing everyone oh, no, no, to no, watch no. it? This, <laughs> no, this was her. This was her. This was on her. Oh, oh it was on your <laughs> You like whispering, "Hey, hey, come on, get the ask them to watch it. Ask them to watch. Ask them to watch." Was hey, that ask you? Hey, watch, watch. <laughs> like they all wanted to watch something else. I'm like, no, no, no. Just try his movie. Just, just try his movie. Try his yeah. movie. Yeah. Uh, and the story is essentially this: 
somewhat dysfunctional family. Uh, I mean, like most families are dysfunctional in, in some way. Mm. They they decide to go on a road trip cross country mm. from the East Coast to the West Coast in the US to allow their six-year-old daughter to participate in a pageant that she mm. made the finals for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a comedy. It's on Disney+. Plus. Um, and if you haven't watched it, and if you're just looking for a good movie, right, it's so damn good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So damn good. Yeah, it's so highly, damn good. So good. Highly yeah. recommend that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, highly recommend it. Correct. And uh, yeah, so what about you, man? Uh, my one short thing is, uh, I was going to say like, mention a Christmas stroller, but then now that it's past Christmas, I think we'll, we'll leave it for maybe uh, the end of the year or something. Like. But the, just a couple of weeks ago, I think I spoke about Tom Cruise uh, jumping off a plane in in a, in a mm. end of year message to thank people for the support of Top Gun, but um, yeah. just I think not just a few days after that because this was two weeks ago la, and there was a video that was released about um uh, a certain stunt in the upcoming Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning movie, which really, which they labeled the biggest stunt in cinema history. Which is basically oh, is a stunt of Tom Cruise riding a motocross bike uh, up a ramp, and then it goes off the ramp off a cliff, and he falls with the he falls with the motorcycle, and base basically base jumps off that cliff la. <laughs> So, I mean, me just describing it doesn't do the whole thing justice, because if you watch, I mean, it sounds like oh, it's just another stunt la, but you watch the amount of uh, insane amount of prep work that they have to do just to pull off that one stunt which you probably watch in the cinemas and it's a I don't know maybe 30 second or one minute uh, section right a sequence where he falls off the cliff right just the amount yeah. of work that goes into it it's just insane and then I think by the end of it I was like uh, I was like you know one of those like very euphoric modes where I was like wow this is the the, the limits of human human creativity like, right when, when a lot of uh, people put their minds together to create something awesome yeah, so because, I mean, do check I mean, it you out. Describe, right? You describing it, it doesn't sound like the biggest stunt. Like he yeah. rides a motocross bike up a ramp, falls off a cliff. It doesn't sound like the biggest stunt. But when it you doesn't. watch it, you're like, oh, fuck, this is amazing. Is it? Yeah, I'll say is just go watch it and, and just appreciate that Tom Cruise is still out there doing his thing, like, you know. Mm. Uh, yeah, because we 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 lost Will Smith this year in, th- in terms of I think his career. <laughs> he committed uh, career suicide, like, right? Yeah. So Tom Cruise is still the old Hollywood star. He's still doing his own stunts. He's still doing all these superhuman things that that make make it worth watch paying ten bucks or fifteen bucks, whatever it is, to see him in the cinema, right? And there's so few people who actually do that anymore, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. So do just just appreciate that we have this com- this coming out, this movie coming out. So yeah. is the latest Mission Impossible movie? Is it? Yeah, the upcoming one, Mission Impossible: The oh, Reckoning. And then the, so the cool thing man. is that this. Uh, this sequence they they shot it in September twenty twenty, you know, uh, oh. like in the midst of COVID. I don't know if you remember there was a there was a you remember there was a clip of Tom Cruise like going ape shit, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. like scolding people on his set because they were not following COVID protocols. That was how, for this like, film. This was this was filmed in twenty twenty. So that shouting was for this film. I believe so. Uh, yeah, because the shouting happened oh, during COVID. Right? He was yeah. basically yeah, 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 he was protesting. And he was. I think he was like really angry that, that some people didn't follow protocol, COVID protocols. And and basically he was scolding them for potentially getting the film shut down like, in the midst of shooting. Yeah. So yeah. He, you know, back then it sounded like, oh yeah, he's just being a Hollywood diva a little bit, like, right? You know, screaming and shouting and all that. But you see the mm. insane amount of work that they go in that goes into like perfecting a stunt like this, and you kind of understand why why somebody would flip out if if they didn't follow the protocols properly. Like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. wow. So, okay, yeah, do cool, check cool. it out. Biggest stunt in cinema history, according to wow. Paramount Pictures themselves. Yeah. Sweet, man. Cool. Which reminds me, I still need to watch Avatar. Okay, okay, yes. <laughs> yeah, the so called big fan list. of Avatar yeah. who hasn't, still hasn't seen it yet. Yeah. <laughs> and then went to watch <laughs> Little Miss Sunshine twice. Wow, Little Miss instead. Sunshine. Fucking yeah. great. Fucking great. Yeah. Uh, cool, yeah. man. Cool. All right. All right. We're back. We're back in 2023. So, yeah. talk Off to you all soon. We we said have a have a new year, right? So yeah, here we are yeah, having a new, a new year. year. Yeah. Having a new year. <laughs> <laughs> Go forth and have your own new year. Yeah.